So I think that it is wise at this stage of the game when we've just done 2.7 trillion, uh, if it's that much, it uh, could be more, that we make sure it's working. Um, I do want to agree, though, uh, with a Democratic colleague, uh, Bernie Sanders, on the issue of health care. I think it's a broken system. Uh, I came from the place where I had to deal with it as a business owner. Uh, every year, grappling with issues of costs going up, uh, people not being covered correctly. I started a plan that covered pre-existing conditions and no caps on coverage and have made it sustainable for now 13 years. I believe some of the lowest hanging fruit that we all could agree with, 80 senators weighed in on ideas to fix the health care system. Once we get all these outlier issues behind us, I think we'll come back to that. Uh, Senator Whitehouse mentioned climate. And I think that's an issue that we've got to consider on our side of the aisle because I think there's a big external cost to it that we currently dismiss. Let's go back to health care. I noticed in terms of any individual in government that tried to put more reforms out there, hitting the industry where it needed to be hit on PBM discounts, transparency, stuff I know that needs to be addressed and has worked, it's hit the courts almost immediately. President Trump did that. What is coming from the White House? What will you shepherd through that if we can get health care costs down, we are taking care of a couple things at once? We're going to make it to where it's going to defer the trust fund being fully depleted here in five years. Uh, give me your thoughts on that, please. Uh, we'll just... Uh, agree with your your uh, focus on the, the importance of tackling health care. It's something that has been reflected in all the president's budgets. Uh, he wants to reform and replace the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that has uh, come with it a, 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 a commitment to protect uh, individuals with pre-existing conditions. Uh, it has also uh, come with it ideas to be able to yeah. pursue uh, 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 federalism and be able to give more states the ability to make decisions and design better programs within the Medicaid system. Uh, we've had Medicare proposals, and these are just savings and reform proposals that don't lead to a cut in the program uh, that would lead to uh, better health care outcomes, uh, cheaper prescription drugs, um, being able to give uh, seniors a cap in the prescription drug program that they haven't had previously. So those are examples that uh, we've done in terms of the proposals in our budget, and then regulatorily, uh, expanding short-term limited duration plans, trying to expand uh, association health plans. These are all things that we're trying to pursue in kind of an all of the above approach with regard uh, to health care. I think that's so important because the health care industry has delivered this, this product that impacts the cost of it's Medicaid, and Medicare, yeah. and private health care costs. Yeah. Um, got a question. Revenues always come up as an issue. And uh, haven't we generated, prior to uh, the coronavirus, record revenues uh, in the neighborhood of being up 35 to 4%? Is that close? That's close. And spending is structurally mostly through the entitlement programs that I think all of us are interested in figuring out how to rein in. Um, so when we're up nearly 4% and the economy was growing close to 3%, but I'll have to agree with Senator Toomey, it, and I would know, I've just come from a Main Street business that's been there 37 years. It was the best period of economic growth. We were seeing wages rise for those that were most in need of it. Um, so is it a revenue problem or is it a spending problem when we're actually generating revenues faster than the growth of the economy? We believe that it's largely a spending problem, and one of the things that we've pointed to, not just in terms of the revenues that continue to have come in, but just as a percentage of GDP, what is the revenue uh, as a percentage of GDP? 17% compared to spending, which has been 19%, 20%, 21% in the last 10 years. So we actually maintain the same percent of GDP in the president's proposed budget uh, that we've had over the last 40 years. What we what we change is the spending. That roughly 17.5% regardless of the tax rate or system that's been in place? That's precisely correct. And so what we've tried to do is change the spending trajectory over time to be able to uh, begin to balance our budget, 
extended period of time, 15 years, but we think that conversation was an important one to have. By the way, uh, Congressman Brady and I have a bill that would peg it at 17.5%, and it would be of the potential GDP to where when you're not there, you could spend up to it. When you're above it, you start to rein it in. Happy to take a look at that bill, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Brown, and thank you for filling in while I went to vote.